You've already had kirtan. so we're reading the Sri Ishopanishad mantra number nine. Dantama Pravishanti Yevidyam Pasate Tatabuya Ivate Tamo Yaovidyam Rataha Andandamaha Pravishanti Pravishanti Translation. Those who are engaged in the culture of nascent activities shall enter into the darkest region of ignorance. Worse still are those engaged in the so-called culture of knowledge. In this mantra, there is a comparative, comparative In this mantra, there is a comparative study of vidya and avidya. Avidya, or ignorance, is undoubtedly dangerous. But vidya, or knowledge, when mistaken as mis when mistaken or misguided, in every is even more dangerous. In modern civilization, the explanation of Sri Ishopanishad is more applicable than at any other time in the past. Modern civilization has advanced considerably. I love it. it has advanced considerably in the matter of mass education, and yet the result is that people are more unhappy than before, or uh, on account of the, of, on account of the, of, on account of too much stress on material advancement. Mm. Without my, huh? What is it? Without my, I should use my computer. It would be easier for me to read than this thing.
Okay, people are more unhappy than ever before because of the stress placed on material advancement to the ex exclusion of the most important part of life, the spiritual aspect. As far as Vidya is concerned, the first mantra has explained very clearly that the Supreme Lord is the proprietor of everything. And that forgetfulness of this fact is ignorance. The more a man forgets this fact of life, the more he is in darkness. In view of this, a godless civilization directed towards the so-called advancement of education is more dangerous than a civilization in which the mass of people are less educated. Okay? Omagyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Takshur Militanyena Tasmanishri Gurave Nama Panchakaupa Tarubhyasya Kripas You can wear it. And you can pass it around everybody else. Ready? 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 Yes. It's prasadam. It was offered. Right? It's prasadam. Yes, it's we offer to the deities as prasadam, so we all accept prasadam. So, bancha kaupata rubyas jakri pasindu bae vacha pati panya pavali Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shriya Kvaita Kana Shiva Tadiva Bhagavinda Hare Krishna, 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 and he had published it in his Back to Godhead magazine, which initially, in his own time, it was just a sheet of newspaper. And he would write articles and he'd publish a few editions. So when he went to the USA, then he told the devotees that, you know, I, I wrote purports on this, uh, on this um, Isho Panishad. You could put it together and make one book. So the devotees did that, and it was published in the USA, and practically very early in our movement. And so Prabhupada explains the significance of this book, why it's so important, because there are a class of people who do not accept books like Bhagavad Gita. Did you ever meet these people? They don't accept the Bhagavad Gita. They accept the Vedas, but they don't accept Bhagavad Gita. They don't accept Srimad Bhagavatam. They say, no, no, these, are, these books are not scripture. You see, there are different classes of scripture. The, the, first of all, the four Vedas are what is known as Shruti. Right? Shruti. Did you hear the word before? Yes. Shruti. So the Vedas are Shruti. The four Vedas. The Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Samar Veda, Atapa Veda. They are all Shruti. And the Upanishads, like Isha Upanishad, this is from which book? It, it's from? Huh? Yes, which Veda? Huh? No. Huh? No. <laughs> Getting closer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it, it's a Veda. It's from the Veda. The Upanishads all come from the Vedas. Actually, there's supposed to be 108 Upanishads, but they're not all available difficult to find them. Uh, but initially there were 108 Upanishads and they're all in different parts of the Vedas. So Isha Upanishad is the one which 
we like, which is particularly popular to comment on. If you go to people who practice uh, Dhyana Yoga, and they will speak on the Upanishads. Like if you go to, you know, there's other missions, I won't mention the names, but <laughs> there are missions who, they will only speak on the Upanishads and they'll have class on Katu Upanishad and Martindale Upanishad. There are many different Upanishads and they will speak on the Upanishads. They won't usually speak on this Upanishad, but sometimes they may do. They will not accept Bhagavad Gita because Bhagavad Gita is from which book? Mahabharata. From Mahabharata, yes. Bhagavad Gita is from Mahabharata, and Mahabharata is not Shruti, although sometimes we call the Bhagavad Gita the fifth Veda, but actually there's only four Vedas, and that's our presentation of the Bhagavad Gita. And those people who are practicing Jnana Yoga, they will not accept Bhagavad Gita. So if you're going to discuss with them and you try to quote Bhagavad Gita, they'll laugh at you and say, no, no, that's not scripture. That's your scripture, not ours. Gyanis and uh, Hindu scholars and so on, these people, they will accept the four Vedas because they are Shruti. They will not accept Smriti. Of course, we do. And the Goswamis, Lord Chaitanya and the Goswamis, they, they accept the, all the different classes of scripture. There's a verse, Shruti, Smriti, Puranadi, Pancharatriki, Bidimbinam, Aikantiki, Harer Bhakti, Utpata Yaiva Kalpate. It, this verse is quoted to say that devotional service should be performed according to the different scriptures, the Shruti, the Smriti, the Puranas, the Pancharatriki, like that, these different books. So uh, we say like that, and we say if you do devotional service, which is not according to these scriptures, then it is simply a disturbance to, the, to society. So Rupa Goswami quoted that verse from scriptures. Uh, however, the, the class of people, the jnanis, they will only accept shruti. So we need to have some shruti to preach. To be, we have to have some scripture, which is also shruti. And Prabhupada presents this Ishopanishad for us. We can quote this. Sometimes uh, we have to debate with these different people. And you will see in Prabhupada's purports in the Srimad Bhagavatam, sometimes he will quote a verse and he will say, the, the Vedic evidence from such and such Upanishad is, and he will quote a verse. And he's giving us verses from different Vedic scriptures, usually different Upanishads to help us to present the Krishna conscious philosophy. One verse which is very popular in presenting our Krishna conscious philosophy, which is from the Vedas, is a verse which says, Nityo Nityanam Nityo Nityanam Eko Bahuna Yogadadu Kama. Okay. Nityo Nityanam Chaitana Chaitanana. Eko Bahuna Yogadati Kama. It's a very important verse because often the people who are presenting the Gyan philosophy are Mayavada. They're presenting the philosophy of oneness, impersonalism, that everything is one. But this verse is a total denial of that. This verse says, amongst all eternal beings, nityo nityana, amongst all eternal beings, there's one supreme eternal being. 
And Chaitanya means consciousness. And amongst all conscious beings, there's one supreme conscious being. And then the verse goes on, Echo Ba, that one supreme Lord is providing the needs of everyone. So that's a very powerful verse. If you know that verse, it can help you a lot. And if you're meeting somebody who is steeped in the impersonal philosophy or the who is following the path of jnana. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna talks about jnana, but, you know, the jnanis, they won't, they won't accept Bhagavad Gita. In the Bhagavad Gita, however, Krishna says, what is the goal of jnana? The goal of jnana is bhavanam jnana bhavanam jnamanamante jnana bhavanam prapadyante. Right? After many births and death, one who is actually in knowledge, what will they do? They will surrender to Krishna, right? And they know that Vasudev Krishna is everything. So that is the goal of knowledge. But the jnanis, they, they won't accept that. For them, the goal is mukti, moksha, sayujya mukti. They want to get impersonal liberation. And so, uh, in this mantra, in the next mantra, we'll hear more about these kind of things, the danger of these things. And some, sometimes, as Prabhupada said here, vidya or knowledge can be even more dangerous when misguided or mistaken. So we have to be careful where we get the knowledge from. Just like, you know, you send your children to school, you want them to study, you want them to get, they should be taught in the authorized manner, right? They should learn the proper things. So this mantra, Prabhupada said, it's comparing vidya and avidya. Vidya means transcendental knowledge. And avidya, ignorance or darkness. So, uh, Srila Prabhupada points out this mantra is more important today than at any other time in the past. He said, this is, world has advanced in the field of mass education. When we look at the colleges nowadays and you hear the different subjects people are studying, it's so different. You know, I mean, I studied more than 50 years ago when I studied at college. And what they're learning now at college, and, you know, these, there are things which were hardly ever taught in those days. You know, it's what somebody told me they're learning uh, artificial intelligence, right? So that's a, a very new subject, of course. So, Prabhupada says, the result of all of this education is that people are more unhappy than ever before. Right? Are you happy? You're yeah. happy. No. <laughs> now, now you're happy, right? Good. We want devotees to be happy, right? But why are people unhappy? Prabhupada said, because of the stress which is placed on material advancement. What does it mean, material advancement? When we say material advancement, what do we, we're talking about what? Faster cars. <laughs> huh? Bigger houses, faster cars. Bigger houses. Smaller. Mm -hmm. Bigger it. wardrobes, <laughs> more jewelry, right? material advancement. We've forgotten how to cook. We've forgotten how to clean. We don't know how to plant vegetables and grow vegetables. And we couldn't tolerate to get our hands dirty in the garden. <laughs> but we know how to use the mobile phone. 
Yeah. And we're very expert in using the form. So Prabhupada says, we put so much importance on material advancement and we neglect the spiritual aspect of life. We neglect the thing which is actually more important, the spiritual part of the world. What examples does Prabhupada give to us about this? About only taking care of the, the body and neglecting the soul? What, what, what examples do you remember about this? The bird and the cage. Yes, right. Good. Yeah, the bird and the cage. You others all know that? You've heard this example before? Yeah? Yes, sir. No? You're new. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. So what about you you all know the bird in the cage? Yeah? Right? Who wants to tell us? <laughs> yeah? You can tell us? Maraji? Tell us, what's the story, the bird in the cage? That people are always, uh, is it of the tree? No, the bird in the cage. Yeah, they, uh, we love the cage and we clean the cage, but the bird inside is captivated and it's like similar like that. It's not fed properly. Yeah, yeah like the uh, body. Uh, so, uh, body. So we are putting in time to decorate the cage okay. uh, to enhance that. But we are not, we are forgetting the soul. We are forgetting the bird, the food for the bird. Ah, the food for the bird, right. You didn't put the food for the bird, right? You kept the bird in the cage and you made the cage very nice, you know, but forgot the food. And what happened to the bird? It died. Why did it die? But it wasn't old. It wasn't sick. What happened? We didn't feed it. So that's a problem. So like that, we forget the most important part of life, the spiritual aspect of life. It's very important for us to know how to take care of the soul. Common people don't know. They don't even know there's a soul. What to speak of taking care of the soul? So first they have to learn that there is a soul and the soul is the living force in the body. It's the soul which gives life to the body. So this knowledge about the soul, the body and the soul, this is very important for people to learn, to be taught this knowledge. Otherwise, we just spend the whole time taking care of the body and we forget all about the soul. And one of the devotees uh, in Singapore, he, he was doing some program. They have this uh, center for people who are, they're suffering from cancer, you know, and they're, they're near to death. They're, they're in the final stages of cancer, but they come to the they come to this center and they arrange some different activities, you know, to, to keep them amused, keep them occupied, because if all the time if you sit at home and you think, oh, I've got cancer, I'm dying, you know, it's very depressing. So they encourage them, you know, come and get together and. There is some different activities. So one of our devotees was going there regularly and he was meeting different people and bringing them together and get them to chant, you know, and tell them stories from Krishna consciousness. But he told me, he said he was very surprised because he saw how some of the ladies who were coming, you know, although they're very near to death, but they're very well decorated. You know, they, they, they have all their makeup on and everything and their hair and everything. He said it, it's quite surprising because, you know, they're, they're so close to death, but still there's so much, um, put so much energy with the body. So that happens. It's unfortunate. 
So Prabhupada then says, he's talking about Vidya, and he said, the first mantra has explained that the Supreme Lord is the proprietor of everything. Who remembers? What was the first mantra? Itavashyam. Yes. Yes. Translation. <laughs> That's the easy part. <laughs> the, the Sanskrit is the easy part. Whenever I ask the Indians, what's the translation? Oh. <laughs> it's a bit more difficult for them. Anyway, translation is every everything. Uh, Everything animate and the personality of God. I, I'm also forgetting. Oh my God. First mantra. It, hmm? Yes. Okay. If I just get the beginning. Okay. No, no. That's mantra three. <laughs> mantra one. The first mantra. Yeah. Everything animate or inanimate that is within the universe is controlled and owned by the Lord. We have a pomegranate tree for the Berka. Everything animate and inanimate, it means everything which has consciousness and which does not have consciousness. It's all the property of the Lord, the Supreme Lord. There's God, you know, we believe in God. We're not atheists. We're not agnostics or gnostics. We accept that there's a God. There's a person behind this world. Hmm? Do you ever have a problem with this? Of course, there's a lot of atheists around today. Even you go to universities, you get, athe you get the atheist society. Some of the devotees, they were in Canberra, in Australia. And in Canberra, it's the capital of Australia. And they have the Australia, ANU, Australian National University. So they, they, ha they have a, a chaplain, a Christian man, who's in charge of the Christian affairs. And he, he met with some of our devotees. And he invited them, you know, you can make your own, you can have a society for your own members, you, you know, because he understood they were not Christian. So he said, yeah, you can have your own society and make a Krishna yoga club or something like that. So they, they had their own society. And there was a special facility, a special hall where they could meet together and have their programs and could do kirtan and so on. But they told us, they told me, they said that after their program was over, the next group to come was the Atheist Society. Oh. And the Atheist Society would come and, you know, look at these fools, you know. They would be very nasty and criticize and try to ridicule the devotees. Although it's supposed to be a university, it's supposed to be educated people, but Still, their education is so lacking, they have no understanding that there's a God, that there's a, a person behind this creation. And how, how, do, how can we support this, that there is a God behind this creation? Well, we say, just look at this, you know, this computer. Did somebody make it? Yes, yeah, yeah. somebody made it, right? Yes. And... And this microphone, did somebody make it? Yeah. And these houses, did people build these houses? Somebody built them, right? So when we look at the world, when we look at the universe, can we say, where did it come from? We say, oh, nobody made it. It just came. It, or it's always been there. They cannot understand that there's so much design in everything. And where there is design, it means there's a person behind it. 
them intelligent people, just like Dubai. <laughs> you know, now, the, the, the modern day materialistic scientists who are generally atheists, they will say everything came from the Big Bang. That's one theory. They have other theories, but they think came from the Big Bang. So, can we say that we went to sleep and next morning, and early in the morning, we heard a Big Bang and we woke up and there it was, Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> With all of its roads and telecommunication and network and motor cars and high everything airport and metro it was all there it just came from the big bang it's so ridiculous isn't it <laughs> but this is what they teach this is what they teach this is how they explain uh, the world or another atheist it all came from the black hole <laughs> fell out of the black hole these kind of theories are there they try to explain that it all comes about by chance, that there's no person, there's no intelligent beings there. There was one, one man in England, he was a famous author, so he wrote a book, Confessions of an Atheist, and he's, he, was, he was from a high, you know, supposed to be a high the aristocratic family, you know, and he wrote this book, Confessions of an Atheist, and he admitted in his book, he said, why I'm, why I'm an atheist? He said, because if I have to believe in God, then I'm obliged to follow certain principles, certain rules I should have to follow. He said, I know it will be very difficult for me, so therefore it's better for me to be an atheist. That, that was his excuse, that I like drinking alcohol and I like gambling and so many other illicit activities which are not approved. I like to do these things, but if I have to admit that there's God, then, then I know I have to give up these things. So that's, that's the, the uh, opinion of some people like that, they don't want to admit that there is a God, there is someone behind the creation, because then they're obliged to follow some principles. So Srila Prabhupada explains that this first, the first mantra of Sri Upanishad declares that the Lord is the proprietor of everything. And forgetfulness of this fact, that is ignorance, right? As soon as we think, oh, who does it belong to? Oh, it doesn't belong to anybody. Mm -hmm. That's that's one idea. Who, whose computer is it? Oh, nobody's. Oh, I'll just take it then. <laughs> uh, one devotee was doing Sankirtan one day on the streets. One devotee was distributing books and he met this young man, and he was talking to the young man, and he was trying to explain Krishna consciousness teachings, that there's one God, and we are all his servants. And the man, the young man was arguing, he said, no, 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 it's all one. It's all one. We're all God. He was, the young man was arguing, like he'd been influenced by this kind of Mayavada philosophy, that we're all God, you know. And there are people who teach this, big men, famous people. They, you are all God. You know, they'll tell you like that. What kind of God I am, I'm suffering. I, you know, <laughs> so many pains of the body, so many problems. And I'm God. What kind of God is that? Anyway, forgetfulness of the young man was saying, we're all God. So the devotee said to him, oh, 
He said, we're all God. He said, I am you, you're, we're all one. It's, we're all one. My young man said, yes, it's all one. We're all one. So the devotee said, okay, give me your car keys. <laughs> and give me your wallet. And then he said, bye. <laughs> and he turned around. And the young man, ah, ah, no, come on, give me back my car keys. Give me my wallet. No, it's all one. This is why I should give you back. So it's so foolish. You know, people talk these things, but it's so foolish. It's so ridiculous. And we have to expose it to people that this, this kind of thinking is not right. So when you read books like this Ishopanishad, then you'll get a lot of points like this to make the, the actual philosophy very clear. So Prabhupada says, the more we forget that the, the Lord is a proprietor, then the more we are in darkness. Right? There's the light and there's the darkness. The Vedas say, Tamasima Jyotirgama. Right? Do you know this? Yeah? Go to the light, right? We don't, you know, when we're young, we want to go to the nightclub, go to the dark places, you know. <laughs> but actually, we should want to go to the light. Darkness is like ignorance. In our Chaitanya Charitamrita, which we read, it says, Krishna Surya Sama, Maya Haya Andhika, Yahan Krishna Tanahi Mayaya Adhika. Krishna is like the sun, and Maya is like darkness. Wherever there is a sun, there's no darkness. Just like the sun is out, so there's no darkness anywhere. So with the appearance of light, all the darkness is removed. So wherever there is Krishna, there's no Maya. Maya is the forgetfulness of Krishna. Krishna means the Supreme Lord. So then Prabhupada says, a godless civilization directed towards advancement of education is more dangerous than a civilization where people are less educated. People get more education. The danger is they don't know how to use the education. They get education and they build bombs. They build fire bombs and they, they build different explosives and they do so many things which just simply disturb the life of ordinary people, people who want to live in peace. Their peace is threatened by these kinds of people. They have some knowledge, but they use it in a very bad way. So Prabhupada says, better people are less educated. Less educated, simple people, they live in the village, and they have some land, they can grow their vegetables, they maybe have some cows, they take care of the cows, they get some milk from the cow, and they can live healthy, happy lives. But you get education. We come into the cities and we get education, so-called education. Srila Prabhupada came to America, 1960s, and he was also taken to some of the universities there in the USA. So he described them as slaughterhouses. What did he mean? And I think in India today, it's not so different. Many of the colleges in, in, in India today also, similar problem. Like in India, there's a lot of drugs, young people taking drugs, and of course a lot of association, a lot of young women there, and young men, and the men and the women are together, right? And it creates some 
problems. So even you're very good at home, you've lived at home and you went to school, and then as soon as you leave home, go to college, go and stay in the hostel, finished. Because you're going to get bad association. You start drinking, smoking, gambling, and all the other bad things come. Isn't it true? Yeah. Did you go to college? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it's certainly, certainly true. So Prabhupada, I'll read more from this purport here. Prabhupada said, different classes of men, and he describes them. Karmis. Karmi means somebody who is, a, a, we would call a fruitive worker, means they're very attached to the results. They, they will do, they may do activities which are pious and they may do activities which are not which are not so pious but they're not very religious they just work they're workers and they want to enjoy the result and then jnanis means people who've got some knowledge a little knowledge transcendental knowledge they may know they're not the body they know they're a soul they may think that soul is God, that may be there. They think, you know, I'm, I'm, we're all God, you know, you're also God, you have not realized it yet. Hmm? Right? Have you realized it? That you're God? Have you? Oh, good for you. <laughs> okay, and then yogis. Yogis are not, not for me. You got some people do the hatha yoga, a little exercise, but generally yogi means meditators. They will sit and meditate. They will sit and contemplate the Supreme. So three kinds of people, karmis, jnanis, and yogis. So Prabhupada said, karmis are busy in Eating, sleeping, they want, well, yeah, working. Why, why are they working? To eat better, to sleep better. <laughs> and this, you know, the, the, these activities, the, the animal activities, eating, sleeping, mating, defending. This is the business of the dogs and the hogs. Human life is meant for something more. Of course, we also eat, sleep, mate, and defend, but we have some control, some regulations on these things. Human life is different from the animals. And Prabhupada said, modern civilization, 99.9% .9 are engaged in the activities of sense gratification. And then Prabhupada mentioned some of the different forms of sense gratification. Industrialism. Economic development, altruism, political act activism, and so on. But all of these activities are based on satisfying the senses without any regard for God consciousness, as it was described in the first mantra. Then Prabhupada talks about Bhagavad Gita. He said, four kinds of people who don't surrender to Krishna. They're engaged in sense gratification. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes four kinds of people. Who, and the first one who doesn't surrender to him, Krishna said, he's a mudha. You know mudha? Donkey. <laughs> Foolish. Donkeys are very stupid animal, but they work very hard. They carry the heavy load. Why? To eat grass. But grass is growing everywhere. Well, of course, not in Dubai, but 
But if you're in India, now it's a rainy season, grass is growing everywhere. But uh, the donkey is thinking, if I don't work, I won't get any grass to eat. But the grass is everywhere. So those who are simply working are worshiping, the Prophet said, they are worshiping Avidya. And people who play the role of helping this kind of civilization in the name of ed educational advancement are doing more harm than those who are on the platform of gross sense gratification. The godless people, an example is given. The advancement of learning by a godless people is like a jewel on the head of a cobra. Did you ever see a cobra? Did you see cobras? Well, generally, you see a lot of them in India, right? You see the, the man with the pipe, you know, he has a basket. You see those cobras? They dance, right? Yeah, you see those cobras? So they don't have jewels on their head, right? But some snakes do have jewels on their head. You get these rare cobras, they have a jewel on their head. And if you see a cobra with a jewel on their head, it's more dangerous. If it's a cobra, run away. The snakes go, oh, a cobra, run. But if it has a jewel on oh, wait, maybe we can get the jewel, right? We become attractive to the jewel. And that's, that's the danger. It becomes attractive. You think, maybe I can get that jewel from the cobra. And what happens? You may get bitten by the cobra. So that's the danger. We have to be careful. So education is like that. The, if people are godless, but they're advancing in knowledge, material knowledge, it's more dangerous because they don't know how to use the knowledge properly. They don't use it for the good of the world. They do it to harm the lives of other people. You know, they think. They think like Haranyakashipu. You know Haranyakashipu? So he is thinking, my friend, my enemy, right? This is the thing. materialistic people, they make distinction, friend and enemy. Prahlad Maharaj told his father, that's not good. He said, you shouldn't think like that. We should see everyone equal. We should see everyone the same. Think of everyone as a soul. Don't make distinction, friend, enemy. But Harani Kashipu, he didn't like that. Yeah. So people are like that. They don't have good education. They have knowledge, but they use it to do harm to others. An another example is given that advancement of education is compared to decoration of a dead body. Right? When the person dies, are you going to decorate them nicely? Not much point, is it? The, the, the soul is gone from the body. Are you going to put the makeup on the face and everything for the, you know, before she goes to the crematorium? No, no, no point, is it? But this advancement of education for people who have no knowledge of God is like that. Prabhupada says in India, as in many other countries, some people follow the custom of leading a procession with a decorated dead body for the pleasure of the lamenting relatives. In the same way, modern civilization is a patchwork of activities meant to cover the perpetual miseries of material existence. The miseries of material existence. 
The Bhagavad Gita talks about these things. It says, from the highest planet down to the lowest. Abrahma Bhuvna Loka Punar Abhartuno Artu. Mamo Pecha to Kontiya Punar Janmanadu. From the highest planet up in the top of the universe. We are in the middle of the universe. We're not at the top of the universe. We are in the middle. There's higher and there's lower. In the lower planets, you've got Yamaloka, the hellish planets, you know. There's no sunlight there. If you find the sun too hot here, <laughs> you can go down to the lower planet. <laughs> Very dark. And everything is lit by jewels on the head to light everything. So, Prabhupada is saying that, that all of this so-called intelligence, it is just covering the miseries of the material world. What are the miseries of the material world? Yes, right. We may say miseries of the material world, no money, no girlfriend. <laughs> you know, we have we have a list of so many miseries, you know. No no mobile phone, right? Mother took my <laughs> mobile phone. <laughs> miseries of the material world. So of course the real miseries of the are birth, old age, disease, death. So, not pleasant to get sick. I just spoke to the devotee in Bangkok, one of our devotees in Bangkok. She said, we had Rathiatra, the next day everybody was sick. We all felt sick. And I said, so many days we were sick. Fever. Oh, terrible. So like that, disease is there. You, we don't like it. COVID came. Did you get COVID? Yeah? Did get COVID? Yeah? Yeah? Uh, did you get COVID? No? Good for you. <laughs> You're lucky. So, we, we try to avoid these things, but it's there. We cannot avoid. It's the nature of the material world. They say vaccination. Is that protection? More people die from vaccination. <laughs> you know, it's more dangerous. So the miseries of material existence, the, the, they, they're not removed by just education. We get more education, spend more money, go to better colleges and universities, more degrees. Does it mean no, no old age? Does it mean no disease? Does it mean no death? No, the same things. The same problems are going to be there. So we have to understand what is the real problem of life. The real problem is we're here in this material world. We're, we, we have a temporary body. Hmm. Everyone, we have taken a material body. In course of time, we will have to give it up. So all of our activities, we spend all, all of our time trying to enjoy the senses. Above the senses is the mind. There's a hierarchy, right? This table, this is a gross, gross elements. And we can use our hands to move the table. But the mind has to give the information. The mind gives a direction to the hands. Pick up the table, move the table. No, the mind is higher than the senses. What is higher than the mind? Intelligence. Intelligence, right. Intelligence will say, well, the table is very heavy. You can't lift it yourself. Get some help to move it, you know. So that is intelligence. And what is seated next to the intelligence? Hmm? The soul. Above the intelligence is the soul. The soul, right. There are two souls. Mm -hmm. Paramatma, Jiva, the soul. Anyway, we say the soul. 
So, but it's sitting, sitting beside the intelligence and giving information to the intelligence. So the soul, our desires, the things we want, this giving information to the intelligence and we think how to do it. So what is the aim of real education? Real education should be self-realization. To know who I am, to understand the self. That is real education. Realization of the spirit, the spiritual values of the soul. And any education which does not allow us to realize these things, then that is actually avidya, nations. We say someone may be MA, right? Did you do your MA? We got any MAs here? You got any? None of you did MA? No? You did MA? Yeah? Master of Avidya. <laughs> right. With the Master of MA. <laughs> so, but uh, to culture such nations, we must go to the darkest region of ignorance. Okay, then Prabhupada continues, according to Bhagavad Gita, mistaken mundane educators are known as Veda Vada Rata and Maya Aparita Jnana, two kinds of mundane educators, mistaken, mistaken mundane educators, two classic. The Veda Vada Rata. Veda Vada Rata means one who is simply mouthing the words of the Vedas. They simply repeat the Vedas. And Maya Aparita Jnana means knowledge stolen by illusion. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes these two kinds of people. Maya Aparita Jnana, he's one of the four kinds of people who don't surrender to Krishna. Remember, one was the Mudha. Yes. Yes, right. Good. Four kinds of people who don't surrender. The Mudha wants to work hard all day. We say, come to the temple and have prasana. Oh, I have no time. I have to work. Why are you working? Well, I have to eat. I have to earn money to eat. Well, I'm telling you, come to temple, eat prasada. No, no, I have to work. <laughs> that is mudha, foolish. Right? And Vedavada of Maya Aparita Jnana, knowledge stolen by illusion. They will want to understand the scriptures by their own knowledge, by their own intelligence. They will not like to hear from the acharyas. They will not like to hear through the disciplic succession. They will just like to enjoy the mind, to think about it themselves, and to explain it in their own way without any authority. That is Maya Aparita Jnana. And the Veda Vadarata, they are also like that that they pretend to be very learned in the Vedas, but they forget the real purpose of the Vedas. What is the purpose of the Vedas? To know who? To know Krishna, right? To know, in the, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Vedanta Krit, Veda Ved, Evacha, by all the Vedas, I am to be known. And then Krishna said, I am the author, I am the compiler of the Vedas. By all the Vedas, I am to be known. So the purpose of the Vedas is to know the personality of God, to know Krishna. But these people, they're not interested in Krishna. What are they interested in? Well, some of them are interested to go to heaven. They want to go to Swarga Loka. Why? You want to go to Swarga? 
You came to Dubai, <laughs> halfway to heaven, right? Mm -hmm. They want to go to heaven to enjoy long life, opulence, like that. And they are fascinated by these things. You want to go there? No? <laughs> well, we should know from Mantra 1, so we are not the proprietor. Krishna is the proprietor. And we should be satisfied with what is given to us by the grace of God. Right? It's a vashyam idam sarvam yakin chajagat one should accept, therefore, only those things necessary for oneself and don't accept more knowing, well, to whom it all belongs. Right? Take what you need. Don't take more. Don't try to accumulate more and more. The jewelry is not enough. Right? One car is not enough. Everybody has a car, right? <laughs> All of these things. We should be satisfied with what we need. So that is the purpose of the Vedas, to help us to come to this God consciousness. So the Vedavada Rata people, they want to forget God. So these people called the Vedavada Ratas. They just simply promote, go to heaven, go to Swargaloka and enjoy the life there. And they don't follow the teachers, they don't follow the Acharyas. The Vedavada Ratas also they they may study the Vedas, but they don't understand what is behind the Vedas. What is the real purpose of the Vedas? If you want to understand the Vedas, you have to understand the Vedas with the help of the spiritual teacher. The spiritual teacher has to be there to direct them. If you just read the books on your own, it's not really enough. We have to understand things in the proper way, just like you want to be a doctor. So you may get the books and you read the books at home, but that doesn't qualify you as a doctor. You have to go to the college, you have to study under the doctor and they can train you and educate you how to use the medical knowledge. In the same way, you want to understand spiritual knowledge, we have to hear it through the, with the help of the spiritual teachers and the acharyas, we have to hear through the disciplic succession. And if we just try to understand it on our own, then we get problems we will come to the wrong understanding. Just like the Vedavada Rata, they're thinking the goal of life to go to heaven and enjoy. And then the other class of people, the Maya Aparita Jnana, and they think that they are God and they think there's no need of worshipping any other God. If I'm God myself, no need to do puja, right? I'm God myself, why I should do puja? And they they will do like that. They will never worship the they will no never worship the deity, they will never worship the Lord. 
because they're thinking that they themselves are God. So this is the effect of Maya. Maya bewilders them. They say God is all powerful. So if he is so powerful, then how can he be controlled by Maya? They say Maya. Maya is God. This is their idea. God cannot answer all these questions. They are satisfied yes. simply to become God themselves. They want to become God. And then the next mantra, mantra 10, you can chant, Anya Deva Hur Vidya Ya. Anya Dahura Vidya Ya. It is so shrill, my dear, and um, ye must that which up shut shere. Anya de Bahur Vidya Ya. Anya Ahura Vidya Ya. Mantra 10. It is so shroom, my dear, and um, it is so shroom, my dear, and um, Yena stad vichak shak shere, Anya deva hor vidya ya, Anya da hor vidya ya. It is so shroom of here and um, it is so shroom of here and um, Yena stad vichak shak shere, Translation The wise have explained that one result is derived from the culture of knowledge and that a different result is obtained from the culture of nation. Well, that's a pretty obvious conclusion, right? If you cultivate knowledge, you get one result, and if you cultivate nations, you get a different result. It's not all the same. But some people talk like that. Some people say, in Bengali, they say, Yatama Tatapa. Many paths all go to the same thing. And they say, all the paths lead to the same thing. Is, it, is that ever possible? All the trains, they all go to Dubai, right? <laughs> all, if you go in the Calcutta railway station, or you go in the Delhi or Chennai railway station, all the trains are going to Dubai. Is it possible? No, of course not. They're all going different places. In the same way, the culture of nations and the culture of knowledge are different. So how to culture how to culture knowledge? We're given some items which are taught here. One should become a perfect gentleman and learn to give proper respect to others. Prabhupada was on television one time in America. <laughs> So we we'll start with one, and we can discuss about that. Oh, okay. because online we they are our regular. Uh, huh? Online we have regular regular Rasmali program. Okay. Yeah, but here many of them are not. Done. So we we'll stop here, and we can. We discuss can discuss. discuss. Just for that. Yeah, yeah, if sure. You don't mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going back then to mantra nine. Yes, ma'am. Right. Yes, ma'am. Those who engage in the culture of nascent, nascent activities means what are these activities? Nascent activities means material activity, activities of the senses. They enter into the darkest region of the worst still are those engaged in the culture <laughs> of so-called knowledge. So so-called knowledge is worse than knowledge. Of course, if it's wrong, right? You're going to get trouble. 
You have to know where you want to go. If you don't know where you want to go, it doesn't matter which way you go. Do you know where you want to go? Did you ever think about it? Where do we want to go? Huh? Back to God. Okay. Very nice. All of you? Yes. Okay. So, any questions, comments? Have, have you got a good study of Vidya and Avidya? We have our master of Avidya here. <laughs> Yes. You said like the education system is so deteriorating these times. Like all the material entanglement and all the wrong things are happening. So how do we give a cover to our kids? Like how do we grow them in a way that when they enter the college, they are a little you know satisfied that okay, they won't indulge into things like that. How do we protect ourselves? How do we protect the kids' kids so that they when they go to college we are a little relaxed? Well, you have to give them the right education, right? If you're going to protect the kids, they have to get the right education from the beginning. If at home, if the mother and father are drinking and smoking and gambling, <laughs> then when they go to college, they're going to do it too. You follow. Right? You have to show example. It's important. Oh, I don't want my kid to do these things. But you do them. Yeah? You, we do them every day. And we expect, oh, I don't want my kid to. Father saying, don't smoke. Father, you smoke. <laughs> Father, well, it's my house. Right? You can say, well, it's my house. I can do as I like. We say the same, you know. Krishna, he's a proprietor. He can do what he likes. It's his house. It's his planet. We are controlled. We have to be controlled. So, father, mother may say, we want you to do these things. Sometimes you get parents, you know, they don't want their children to become Hare Krishna. Better he becomes a drunkard. Better becomes a drug addict. Sometimes even parents, they'll even pay somebody to kidnap their son. Take him away. Brainwash, he's been brainwashed. By Hare Krishna. He's been brainwashed by Hare Krishna. So there was one boy, he got kidnapped and they took him away and they gave him drugs to forget everything. And he forgot everything. Only thing he could remember, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. He, he couldn't stop chanting. He forgot everything else, couldn't remember anything. But he didn't forget the mantra. Because the mantra is not material. So the drugs they gave him is affecting the material conscious. But it could not affect the spiritual conscious. Right now in the society, the education system, it is taught uh, get good marks in school get good grades in college, so you get good job, get good uh, salary, so you get a big house. That is the thing we are feeding in the kids. From the childhood till they are just to do all things good, so you get good salary and you get good uh, 
big house, materialistic. We are pushing them to the materialistic thing only, and they are taught that only. Oh yes. So Definitely. yes, true. Somewhere, um, and they are very busy to you know um, go to these classes or Bhagavad Gita classes. Too busy, they are running into all these things. So how to bring in or balance things? Yes, that's important. We think there has to be the balance there between the material. That that will come in a couple of mantras. It will say you have to balance the material and the spiritual. So you cultivate sight by sight. You know, we have to cultivate the material knowledge. You have to live in this world. At the same time, we shouldn't be grinded by it. So having spiritual knowledge will help us to balance these things. But if you if you don't have any spiritual knowledge, that's the problem. If people have got some training, some education in the spiritual aspect of life, Hare Krishna, then that will protect them. So we, we try to arrange, you know, like we have summer camps and we send the youth away with the devotees, go with the devotees and pass the summer holidays, you know, with the devotees. And some devotees are going to like you know, Pune or, or, or Mayapur. And we, we have these programs you know, to bring the youth together and take them to the spiritual, take them to the temple and have special programs together. So it gives them some taste of spiritual life, you see? And it, it also gives them a feeling of belonging that they don't need to get drawn into the other things, you know, the drugs and the gambling, and the alcohol, and these things. They can stay, they, they can say, no, I'm, I'm not interested for those things. So there's, the, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes two kinds of natures. So we try to cultivate the, the divine nature rather than the Asuric nature. So it, training, the education is important. Yeah. Just as you get educated for material knowledge, you need to get education for spiritual knowledge also. So Prahlad, Prahlad, of course, he said, from the beginning of life, you have to get that kind of education. The sooner you get it, the better, right? Komar Acharit Pragno Dharmam Bhagavad. Kumar means the young boy. First five years of life is Kumar. So that's the time when they should begin their education. And if they get it from the beginning, then it's so much easier. You can learn also even at the end of life. But it's more difficult. But you can do it some like Ajamila. You know the story of Ajamila. You know, he was at the end of life, but chanted. Uh, what if I use this advanced education to do good for the people? Why does that come spiritually? Well, yes, you can use advanced education to, to, to do good for the people, but not everyone does that. See, there are some people, they get advanced education and they abuse it. They don't use it properly. So that's the danger. Yeah. Your intentions may be good, but not everyone has the same intention. Different people are, have different intentions. Why? And they get the knowledge, they use it for things which are destructive and harmful. And it may be harmful to the individual self and may be harmful to society as a whole. Hmm? 
Well, you can inspire him by your transformation. You know, if you're able to impress upon him, not necessarily making a show, but just the fact that you're happier and you're much more peaceful and you take pleasure in devotional activities. I think you, your own example will be more important yes. rather than giving him instruction. But you give him instructions, you think, well, oh, my mother, you know, what does she know, you know, just my mother. Mm. And young people, they like to be with other young people. Yeah. So you have to have a, an opportunity, you can send them to be with the other young men, young people. They, they like to be together. They have their own sangha and they create their own atmosphere. They have their own activities. Like in Dubai, you know, we do have groups of young people and they'll go off together and play football, whatever, you know. And we'll do also kirtan and things and discuss philosophy. Yeah, so we do have groups like that, you know, there's some groups of young people. They meet, they come to the, the, the room. I think Sri Balaba's brother, Nanda. He is he's in charge of the young people. He's, he's not in Dubai. Man. Yes. He's not in Dubai. My son is not in Dubai. So I have to see where. He's where, not here in Dubai. Oh, where is he? He's in China, Maya. He's, he's in so, China. Yes. Yeah, so you should Yeah, so that's. Where is he in China? He's in Zhengzhou. It's Henan province. Henan province, Jinjo is the city's name. Jinjo. Jinjo, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, if he wants association, he could get it. Yeah. Online. Online. Yes, yeah. That he does. That he does? He, yeah, that he does. Okay. Yeah. But very rare and little, sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions, comments, questions? Yeah, it's important to try to get association. Try to be with the devotees, to come together. If you get the right association in the beginning of life and then as they grow up then it's natural to be Krishna conscious. Krishna consciousness is in everyone but it has to be awakened by hearing. Most important activities kirtan and prasadam. You need kirtan, regular kirtan. You can do kirtan in your home. And if you don't do it yourself, you can be hearing kirtan, playing the recording. Mm, so many nice kirtan. Did you attend the kirtan melas here? Yes, yes. yes. Mm? So there's so many on YouTube. You can get the recordings. You can hear the Mayapuris and these different people doing kirtan. Very nice. And try to enjoy, chant along with them, you know, join in the kirtan, the chanting. That's very important. Spiritual sound vibration. 
trying to play regularly this kirtan, hearing the holy name, chanting. And learn how to cook nice. Then your family will be happy. <laughs> if you don't cook nice vegetarian dishes, they'll go towards non-veg. So it's very important. You have to be a good cook. You want your family to be vegetarian, you have to cook very tasty, nourishing, satisfying dishes. And then they will never want to eat. When Prabhupada went to America, nobody was a vegetarian. But nobody asked for meat because Prabhupada's cooking was so good. He was cooking nice. <laughs> Not only pictures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So cooking is a Vaishnava art. It's very important. We have to cook. Sometimes I also, I also cook. I also go in the kitchen, cook sometimes. Govinda Maharaj, his kitchen is very wonderful. He was used to be in charge of our kitchen in Isha, in Vrindavan. He was cooking big quantities. He's very expert. And Prabhupada used to cook. Prabhupada liked to go in the kitchen, show us how to cook. And he would always tell us, Oh no, you cooked this not no, not very good. <laughs> not proper, too much oil, something. But sometimes you say oh, very nice. <laughs> Making samosas. He was very particular. Pastry had to be just right. The filling also the the olive will be matter, right? Uh -huh. Everything has to be just right, perfect. And Prabhupada would always want to see the prasadam. He would taste it. He would tell us, no, oh, it's okay, yeah, this good. Or he would say, it's no good. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how we can win people. To Krishna consciousness by a nice prasad. And Kirtan, nice Kirtan. These young young men, young people, they can also learn Kirtan while they're very young. You know, let them learn Madanga and Harmonia. And we've got nice young children playing nowadays, five years old. They're already on YouTube. Leading Kirtan. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's very nice. Are you playing? Do you play harmonium? No? Play Kamba? Oh, very good. Yeah. yeah. You play Kamba. It's very nice. You can play in the Kirtan. What about you? Play? You sing. He only sings. He sings? My daughter plays guitar. Plays. My daughter. Plays guitar? Yeah, yeah. Very good. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, we should learn. When they're young, it's easier Correct. to learn. Correct. Right? Let them play. Play? And then... We get the bodies come, they bring their saxophone, their flute, play the kirtan. Thank you.